Welcome to Fight Day Focus, the last word before the first takedown. We have a huge fight card ahead for UFC London coming up later. 15 fights, no less, very exciting. And for such a big London fight night, we had to have some big guests as well, of course. The undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world is here, Leon Rocky Edwards. We got our favorite Las Vegan with us. We have Mackenzie Pavasic. Not to be confused with Mackenzie Pavlovich, as Dan Haley said last weekend. Pavlovich? Not well, yes, I went a Pavlovich before, you Pavlovich. <laughs> Which you could the situation. Mackenzie Pavasic. Oh, wow. Only, I'll only let it slide with you, John. Only okay. you. No well, one I'll else. Take that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Leon, yeah. you have been crossing over to the mainstream. So proud of you for that. Good but man. can we talk a little soccer aid? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't your yeah. fault. No. He sliced no. that. No. Um, and Black Paul Scholes is like one of the best like strikers there is, right? So um, getting a goal in against Megan is privilege to him, so fair play. <laughs> So not quite the safest hands in the UK, but the most dangerous hands you can see. For still... sure, 100%. No, it's great to see, great to see. And Mackenzie, back in London. You know, you've been here a few times now, but where does London stack up? Oh, London is, of course, one of my favorite places to go. Excuse me, is uh, one of <laughs> the, the... There you the go, uh, correct answer, everyone. The Thank favorite you very much. Place. I can pinpoint Canary Wharf when I fly over London. The customs agent must be a huge Fight Day Focus fan because he recognized me of that course. or I have way too many work visas in my passport. <laughs> I think more than I have stamps of other countries. Um, but yeah, no, London is so familiar. It's truly one of my favorite cities. And then of course, the fans inside the O2, I can say with confidence, been all over the world, especially this year, nothing stacks up to the British fans inside the O2. So. Oh, you say all the right things, <laughs> don't you? Well, we're gonna get into it uh, right now. Now, actually, the man at the top of the bill, Tom Aspinall, it feels like just yesterday that he suffered that agonizing injury where lots of questions were surrounding about how he would come back. But he is back, and apparently he's twice as good as he was this time last year. Very exciting for Aspinall fans. This is how it looked when he faced off with Mark Chinterborough yesterday. Great stuff, Leon, coming to you first on Tom Aspinall. You know, you've done it, obviously. You're back in here, you, you are headlining at the O2. Tom gets that chance once again. He's been away a year. Before he went away, I thought that he was in, in great shape, looked like a, a big, strong heavyweight, but yeah. seems even bigger, even more ripped stepping onto the scales yesterday. Yeah, 100%. Um, I saw him in the hotel as well. He's walking around like a bunch of like Transformers with him, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward for, for him coming back and, and competing, you know? I've always held um, time and high expectations. So I feel Saturday night um, is built for this moment. And is this his second headline right at O2? The first one? Third. Is it the third? Oh. Yeah. So he's used to the stage, right? He's used to being um, the main man in the, in the arena. So I'm looking forward for him coming back after injury as well. So I'm excited for it. I want to go on a couple of points there though so yes he's coming back but this yeah. was the scene of the crime yeah. like this yeah. is where he had the worst night of his life and that was the last time that he was here as a competitor as someone that's had these layoffs uh, and perhaps someone that obviously knows the game and talked to a few people that have been through this like how much of a mental challenge is it going to be for him to kind of park all of that and express himself to the best of his ability um i think that's the the thing right like this because he's already skillful enough to, to go out and perform. It's more the mental battle of coming off the surgery and then going back to the scene of the crime. And um, so I feel like, but I feel like Tom is in a position where, like I said, mentally strong. Is from what I've been hearing from him and talking in interviews, it seems like he's, like I said, twice the man that he was before. You know, so that's a dangerous man, and to be facing in, facing someone like that in the hometown. Um, with two legs now, like I said, <laughs> it's coming two legs. Tom with two legs. It's going to be. Um, 
It's going to be a fantastic performance. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to be front row watching it. Tom Aspinall as a heavyweight, third main event now. But how do you feel like he's handled the media in terms of saying all the right things to, again, help get himself in, in that place to put on a good performance? Well, I think something that was really interesting this week when I spoke to him earlier on Wednesday was that, you know, he said, took the year away to develop not just as an athlete, but like as a man and mentally he took time off to focus on the things that were really important. And he does truly seem different. Not that he needed to change in any way, but he seems maybe a little bit more mature as an athlete. And he said that, you know, two nights happened inside the O2 arena for him so far. The best night, one of the best nights of his life and the worst night of his life. So now he gets to set that record straight. And I think as we're talking about mentally, what that can do for an athlete, I think this is a really big moment for him because he gets to kind of close this chapter and move past the injury and kind of open a new chapter of his career. Leon, is it rare, that, talking from a, a fighter's perspective, to want to go back and like almost heap the pressure on yourself? Because I'm sure that Team Aspinall could have sat down, looked at this and thought, no, we want three rounds to see how, how yeah. we're built back. We don't want to carry the main event because it's a big responsibility. But from a fighter's perspective, do you like it? Nah, that's all rubbish. We want the biggest challenges, whatever the cost. Um, I think it shows the confidence in him and, and his team, right? I think it shows how much they believe in him, um, how he's been looking in the gym, that they're willing to step back into a five round main event, willing to headline the bill again. So um, yeah, I feel that that just speaks volumes to him, his confidence from coming back from that injury and what, what they've been seeing in the gym, you know? So from a fast perspective, um, yeah, it's all just about the, how you feel, right? Is, it, is your confidence back? Do you truly believe what you're saying in, in his interviews, right? Do you actually believe that having this surgery, fixing your knee will as, add value, value to you? And it does, so um, yeah, I think, like I said, if there's one man I could count on to go out there and perform with Tom, you know? So I'm excited to be there and, and to enjoy it. Another thing that we learned about Tom is the way that he structured his camp, Mackenzie. Yeah. As Leon was saying, he's walking around the hotel with a lot of big lot. human <laughs> beings. Like I haven't seen a collection of yeah. men that, of that size anywhere else. Yeah. It's, it's rare in the UK, isn't it, Leon, to have, to have good heavyweights. Yeah. So can you tell us about like, the team that he's put together and, and you know, what that will do for his confidence and preparation? Because it's different from what he had before. He did say that this is the first time he's trained with all heavyweights. And in my mind, I didn't say this to him, but in my mind, I was like, wait, what? How are you able to be like so good and match anyone that's put in front of you if you're not even working with people of that size? And the heavyweight division, obviously, with such a range of weights that it could be, you could be going up against someone you know, that's pr the biggest person you've ever seen before. So I think for Tom, as he moves forward in this stacked, entertaining division and moving toward maybe a title shot, maybe the biggest thing in this camp is not training with someone who's maybe light heavy, <laughs> you know, maybe even a middleweight who's put on some extra pounds for, to help out for this camp. I think having full-fledged heavyweights in your camp for the entirety of it is going to be a huge difference maker for him. Exciting stuff. Well, another man that's going to be very interested to see how this camp has shaped up is, of course, his opponent, Marcin Tabora. We're going to move on to him in a second. But before we do so, let's hear from Tom Aspinall himself. Guys, thank you so much. You're here with Tom Aspinall, ready to be back in the headline here in London. Uh, you know, this is something that you have grown accustomed to, but you've been in a bit of a different place since we saw you last. So where is your headspace at heading into this one? I'm just very excited about it, to be honest. I love this building. Like Every time I come in, I get excited about this building. So I'm happy to be back, and I can't wait for tomorrow. From your perspective, you know, just going through all of the training, the whole process, do you feel like the same guy before the injury happened? I actually feel much better, much better. Like I feel way more rested. I feel like my knee was giving me problems for a long time, so that's all gone. It's fixed. The surgery is done. Everything's good. So I'm really happy with everything. Is there something about your opponent, Marcin Tiburo, that really excites you ahead of this matchup? Well, he's a top 10 heavyweight. He's won seven out of his last eight in the rankings. He's a big guy, and if he hits you, you're going over. So he's a heavyweight guy who's dangerous, so he definitely excites me. This is heavyweight MMA at the highest level. Massive guys, tiny gloves. One punch changes everything in this division. Well, I think I speak for everybody here in London when we say we are excited to have you back. So best of luck. Guys, back to you. Of course, he's sounding confident, excited to see what performance Tom Aspinall can bring. But as a guy who's been around the European MMA scene for such a long time now, I'm very proud to see Martin Tabura get this opportunity. He's definitely earned it on a hell of a, a win streak as well. It's seven out of eight fights that he's won. 
sneaky good win streak. Like that's gone under the radar. Yeah. So he's coming in with really good form, but it's a big moment, isn't it? And, and how big is this moment? Because if he doesn't get his hand raised, does he get this kind of opportunity again? Well, I think the fact that it's been seven years since that, that first main event that yeah, he had in 2017. Yep. Yeah. Since then, I mean, so much has happened in his career, but it hasn't quite been to the caliber of a main event spot. So as far as does he get another main event if he loses, I'm not totally sure. The, the heavyweight division's got a lot of movement right now, and there's definitely plenty of people that need to be tested against tried and true people that are in the top 10. But for this one, I thought was really interesting with Marcin was he said that, you know, he lived in London. He's been inside the O2. He was the backup when Tom fought That's Alexander right. Volkov. Yeah. So he came through the whole fight week, he made weight, and then he sat inside the O2 and experienced the yeah. crowd, which I think is the one thing that gives him a slight not advantage, but as far as any other person that's never been inside the O2 before, he that familiarity. knows. Familiarity. Yes, he knows what to expect from the crowd. He's been there. He's technically been the enemy, but not really the enemy. So he got a really interesting insight into what it is to prepare for a Tom Aspinall fight yeah. in London. And in fact, having lived in London, he used to help people move flats. That. <laughs> He can he's move a familiar. Lot of yeah. <laughs> I can see him, like not too many tricks. Like, yeah. He's doing it like everyone else takes a break. Marcin's got this. He's yeah. got just the dresser on one hand, all the groceries on the other arm. He's yeah, definitely one is back. yes, yeah. one one trip man for sure. But I think maybe the familiarity is the one thing in this fight that most people run into issues with. There was a wry smile from Leon when he said, "I've been to the O2." Yes, yeah, you quite <laughs> literally you've made yeah. the walk so many times. Like, give us a sense of. What is it gonna be like? Now it's different. Like watching it in the audience and like actually competing again, um, again in it, it's two different feelings. You know, like, I understand what is where it's coming from, as far as like being in the arena. But um, to go against the UK fans, against a UK fighter, is a tough spot to be in. You know, the, the crowd are crazy. The everyone just like it's like a movie. You know, when when I fought there in March, um, different my, my world title against um, Kamara Usman, I just remember walking out thinking, oh, this is. This is crazy, you know. What do you, what do you see? Like the moment Just, you come out of a locker room where there's people walking around, lots of closed doors, yeah. and then you turn that corner. Yeah. What do you see and feel and hear? See, see the turn the corner, um, the curtains are there, right? So you just hear like it was going like, like the stamp in the floor. The, it's, like, it's like a chaos, you know? Then as soon as you open, open the curtains, it's all just like comes at you, you know? You just gotta go for it and stay focused and um, get, to, get to, the, to the octagon. Once, once you do, then you feel comfortable, but it's the walk. To Dr. Gunn, it's, even if when you're fighting, you can hear them shouting and going crazy, you know. So it does affect a fighter if you're not used to um, that environment. It's all good and well watching it, but when you're actually performing in it, it's two different feelings, you know. And I remember you telling me, uh, I'm pretty accurate on this, that you, you tried not to take much of it in. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you were almost like, had your armor on when yeah. you were walking to the octagon. Is, is that fair? Yeah, 100%. Because like I say, it's so crazy that it's easy to like distract you, right? If you're not focused on the, the job at hand. So I sort of like block it all out until like the next day, I look at Instagram and there's like loads of videos of what, what, what went on, you know? But it's definitely a difference between watching it and taking part in it, for sure. I asked this question carefully because I don't want it to be go down on record that you're going to give away the game plan of how you can beat Tom Aspinall. But you have <laughs> a big mobile heavyweight who's got power. I think he's, he's got a ridiculous rate for like knockouts and submissions, like double threat. So if you were to face someone of that ilk, like what are the important things that Tabora needs to do? Or um, not do, maybe? Yeah. Um, he's, Tom is quite good everywhere, right? He's good on the ground, jiu-jitsu wise, he's good, um, good heavy boxing. So first of all, I'm testing that knee out just to see how much he's, he's healed up, just from what he's been saying, right? I'm leg kick straight away just to feel um, if he can, because that's what stopped him the last time, right? It was like over, um, extending his knee and hurting himself, so I'm going straight for the leg kicks and then just mixing in maybe my grappling first, just to sort of slow him down a bit. He got very fast hands, Tom has, you know. So if we miss a little bit of like cage grinding on him and just like wear him out a little bit, then later on start landing more um, punches. But yeah, I definitely started fighting with a lot of leg kicks, uh, movement, grinding him against the cage, just keep touching him until later on in the maybe four, or five, three, four, five, start letting go of my hands a bit more, you know. Interesting stuff. Just pulling back, taking a kind of bird's eye view of the heavyweight division. Really interesting. You know, when you've got the pound for pound number one, 
John Jones coming down, it, yeah. it really does ignite a division. And we got big contenders. So from Marcin Tabura's perspective and Tom's, like how, in, how important, Mackenzie, is it for these guys not to just etch out a win, but to really make a mark? And do you think that's going to dictate the way that this fight plays out as well? I think so. Well, when I, when I spoke to both of them earlier this week, I did bring up, you know, the landscape of the heavyweight division is a very exciting one right now. You have a fight with John Jones to work toward, and that's, that's the goal for everyone in the division. When I asked, you know, what's most important, is it making a big statement? Neither of them, like, obliged to that. They were both like, you know, no, what's important to me, what's important to Tom is going out and getting in the win. And what's important to Marcin is kind of testing himself against Tom. He was quick to admit that it was really hard for him to find flaws with Tom's game. But the one thing he's confident in is that he is excited for the brawl. He's comfortable in the brawl. So he knows that Tom will bring the fight forward and he's not gonna be moving back. Big is key, figuratively, literally. It is a big heavyweight main event later tonight at London's O2. Serving as the co-main though is Molly McCann, Yulia Stolyarenko. Molly caught up with Charlie yesterday. Guys, thank you so much here with Molly, the meatball McCann. The first thing that you said when you just walked onto set was, I need to take a breath. It sounds like you had just a rush of emotions experiencing how the crowd reacted when you walked onto stage. Where's your head at right now being back here in London? I'm just happy and thankful and grateful to be back in, in my home country and in front of a lot of my family and friends. The crowd never disappoints here. And um, it was a big rush of emotion then and then straight away, right, just calm back down, get my head back in the game. The walkout it, that way it really doesn't show too much, but um, it showed me enough anyway. Yeah, and, and you talked about the other day how really it's been interesting to, to feel how you've grown as a person, you know, in front of the cameras, uh, in front of an audience. Uh, do you feel like that journey is still continuing for you? Yeah, I think everyone will, um, but I don't know. I've only had seven fights when I joined the UFC and I've had to grow up in front of everyone. I've bid my highest highs and my lowest lows to you guys down the lens. And whether you want to um, come on the journey with me or just throw the hate, I'm all for it because I'm living my dream. Whether it is the low days and whether it is the high days, I'm living my God-given dream. So. Well, Molly, best of luck. We cannot wait to see what you can get done tomorrow. Thank you, fame. See you then. <laughs> Guys, back to you. Absolutely love hearing from Molly. Every time always brings the energy and you know that the O2 Arena love her as well. Mackenzie, it was a heartbreaking loss for her against Erin Blanchfield, but apparently one that she feels like is really going to help define her next moves. Almost like she needed it to kick on. I think technically she had said, you know, we won't know how I've developed from this loss until I get into the octagon. So we kind of just have to remember that tonight we will see how she evolved. But I think the evolution we've seen from her mentally and emotionally, and again, like I was mentioning with Tom, from a level of maturity, she seems like a different person, which we didn't realize we needed. We all love Molly McCann, we love her energy, but I think something that maybe she had struggled with was such a quick rise. Last year for her and Patty, both of the elbows inside the O2, the amount of notoriety and attention that came with those two performances, it felt like she was going up on this roller coaster and it was just a matter of time before the roller coaster then went down. Leon, I'm sure like Team Edwards, when you were on the up, they wanted more for you, yeah. more interviews, more attention, because that brings more spoils so that you can support your journey and just get, just get more resources. But, and I know that it was agonizing at the time, yeah. so many disappointments along the way, and it felt like the reins were really on and it, and it took a while, but you got there. Yeah. Are you now looking at some of your peers who have gone up real fast and then they've, they've encountered some of these uh, mental struggles or whatever it might be, but get, put into huge fights a little too early. Are you almost grateful for a slightly slower burn on your career? Um, yeah, 100%, because like she said, like Molly and, and, and Paddy last year was like st straight up, you know, so to handle that pressure straight away in the UFC is a lot for anyone getting into the UFC. Just what, what is it, what, what, when you say the pressures, like what are the kind of things that they would have been encountering? Um, just like getting dragged left, right and centre, you know, like you have to do this media, you have to go here, you have to go here and it takes a lot away from your training, you know, so you, it's hard to try to balance, because you want to do these things right, you could, this is what you dream of when you're coming up, you want to do TV shows and get involved in, in other projects, but as you're doing this, it's you, taking a lot away from you being in the gym and improving and um, 
from what got you to the stage in the first place? I do feel for um, Molly and, and Paddy. But like I said, if there's one person that can also do it is, is Molly, you know, energy's, I sitting in the hotel this week, her energy's just always just like buzzing, you know, and like for me, I'm like very, very quiet fight week, but for, for some reason, her and Paddy just like, they, they, they're more outgoing fight week, you know, which is um, good to see and her energy's still the same, so it's good to see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what she comes up with against Stolia Renko, submission specialist. Uh, that training that she had against Erin Blansfield will definitely transfer across. But while we got you here, we've got to talk about Jai Herbert, yeah. a man who's in camp with you. I know he poses like Cowboy Cerrone back in the day. <laughs> he calls you Uncle Rock. First yeah. of all, are you in his corner? This yeah, weekend? 100%. You're definitely. in his corner? Oh, wicked. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. How, how good has Jai looked uh, for this one? Because it's almost like a bit of a mirror. Yeah. Like for a ZM, tall, Slim, mm -hmm. you know, I can say that, you know, got the yeah, pipe cleaners yeah, yeah. as well, but <laughs> bring some nasty elbows and knees. Like yeah. Jai, when he gets going with his striking, yeah. he's a deadly, deadly guy. Yeah, exactly. So that's what it is, right? Just trying to get him going. You know, once Jai gets going, he's, he's hard work to deal with. Even in the gym, he's hard to deal with. If he wants to get into his flow and feel Jai, it was more mental. You know, his, his first four UFC fights, it was all like killers, you know, and to, and he's only lost the fights through like split second bad decision. You know, and so I was trying to just more talk to him mentally, just trying to put him in a place where to have that confidence in himself, that know that you, you belong here and um, go out there and perform. I want to get your insight again. Lerone Murphy's been through yeah. the gym. Um, he actually came down to the gym for this camp and did, did a few um, spars with some of the guys. And um, I, just, I just love the way he moves and just his combination. I, I mix it all together, you know, and I said it to him when I was in the gym room, like, like actually good you know so like, <laughs> like you need to like have that what do you what do you, do you say that? What, 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 yeah 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 of course yeah but like there's some people that come to the gym they think oh it's not the same but when I, when I, like, when I move around him a little bit even though I'm much bigger than him he's still like I can tell what he's doing is correct you know and that's just game like advice for us just keep keeping your journey obviously if you need a coach go find one you're more than welcome to come to my gym and train as well you know um for me it's all about growing mixed martial arts in the UK so if I can give back and help um, the up-and-comers like Lerone, that's got a lot of talent. I'm, I'm there to help. Nathaniel Wood. There's been some links between Lerone and Nathaniel. They were supposed to fight uh, back in March. It's much ado about nothing, but I'd like you to talk about Nathaniel because this is a, bit, a big fight for him with Andre Feely. I did speak to both Nathaniel and Lerone right after they had this little interaction you may have seen on social media. A ding dong a over little, here uh, in the UK. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll let you call it that. In, in the hotel on Tuesday though, we saw them just having at it a little bit. And I actually spoke to both of them, obviously separately in their interviews. And I said, hey, is, does it feel like there's unfinished business? And, and they were both kind of like, meh, not really. I mean. Nathaniel said one day he would love to punch Lerone in the face, just okay. wants to fight him. And just, I think just fighter to fighter. And it seems as if both of them, you know, they had their, their piece, now it's done. And they both have serious opponents to be focused on anyway. And well, we will find out. Lots, lots to look forward to on this card. But before we let you go, yeah. of course, the fans want to see you back at work. Yeah. Like, do we have a, a time frame? And, and is it likely to be Colby? Um, yeah, so I was in Vegas last week, um, had dinner with Hunter, and he was basically saying if Abu Dhabi or New York, Mansfield Garden, but now Abu Dhabi's been made, right? So it happens at um, Islam. So it's looking like it's going to be the co main for John Jones. And um, how, do you how do you feel about that? Like, which one would you have preferred? Um, probably the John Jones one. I posted like, a picture the other day, like when I met John Jones when I was like 19 years old in Vegas, and I asked like a. Like, a Look at me now. Yeah, I actually like, like a photo with him. And then I saw him again last week in LA and um, I showed him the photo, right? He's like, oh, what? Was the size difference about the same though? Because he's obviously a yeah, much bigger human being yeah, right now. I heard he was a big yeah, boy yeah, over there. He's and... a big boy, very big boy. And so yeah, it was, it'd be good to like headline, uh, co-headline a, a pay-per-view with him, you know, from having that history from first meeting him when I was 19 to now co-head on a pay-per-view in New York would be like a crazy story, you know, and it's the iconic venues are. Um, I was going to say. Garden. So, um, yeah, that'd be a good one. And the opponent is looking like somebody called Covington. Um, I'm ready to go and I, I cannot wait, you know, to go out there and press someone like Kobe. Like, I just can't wait, you know, so it's going to be an exciting time and let the rain continue. What, what, what do you mean, like someone like Kobe? I just don't like him. So. <laughs> right, gotcha. <laughs> so to be able to like go against someone like that, um, that's added motivation in camp, you know, added early. I'm like, it's getting about six, six o'clock to run, getting about half five to run, you know, like, it's, so it's well, added What is it to like about Colby? 
What, what is it what to isn't, like? What isn't to like about oh, Colby? What is there to like about Colby? <laughs> should, should be the question, right. you know? So, um, like I said, it's added motivation for me, for the team, so it's going to be an exciting time. We have Please. to recreate the photo in yeah. Madison Square Garden yeah. with you, you and John with your belts. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It, it's gonna I happen. will see to it. It will it's, happen. It's happen. It will 100%. happen. We will make sure happen. it's on Fight Day Focus so everyone can see for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, had no, to make no, it happen. happen. Absolutely. I'm glad that you're sharp and across these things. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, Mackenzie Pavasic. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and of course, the reigning, defending UFC welterweight champion, Leon Rocky Edwards. <laughs> thank you, Leon, for stopping by. Big fights tonight, lots of fights. You can check them out on TNT Sports, ESPN Plus in the US. Check your listings for all the rest. Thank you for joining us. You've been great. Tonight, Tom Aspinall looks to make a statement by turning back streaking veteran Marcin Tybora. Plus, McCann versus Stoliaranko. Live from the O2, only on ESPN Plus.